Today we're going to read 2 Nephi chapter 30. And Nephi is continuing the revelation, explaining more about this restoration and what's going to be going on in the last days as part of the restoration. And now behold, my beloved brethren, I would speak unto you, for I, Nephi, would not suffer that ye should suppose that ye are more righteous than the Gentiles shall be. For behold, except ye shall keep the commandments of God, ye shall all likewise perish. And because of the words which have been spoken, ye, not, ye need not suppose that the Gentiles are utterly destroyed. So Nephi was talking in the last chapter about these Gentiles in the last days who were rejecting the word of God. And I'm sure the people who were hearing are like, oh, those Gentiles are bad. They should make better choices. And then he whips it around and says, what? You're doing it too. He's well, like, he whoa, says, whoa. Don't, well, he says, don't think you're better than them, pretty much is what he's telling them. Don't think because, oh, yeah, those Gentiles, I'm better than them. I'm going to be you're, saved because I believe start, in the... They're going to start being like those Gentiles. If they stop keeping the commandments, then they will likewise what? Be wrecked. So it doesn't matter who you are or where you come from, it boils down to keeping the commandments. For behold, I say unto you that as many of the Gentiles as will repent are the covenant people of the Lord, as many of the Jews as will not repent shall be cast off for the Lord covenant tis with none, save it be with them that repent and believe in his son, which the Holy One of Israel. So back in those days, there was a lot of prejudice against Gentiles. The Jews were like, oh, we're descendants of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. We're the covenant people of the Lord because we were born in their bloodline. And all you Gentiles who were not born in our bloodline, you're all bad. And Nephi just flips it on its head. And he says, whoa, 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 guys, those Gentiles in the last days who actually repent of their sins and follow Christ, they're the covenant people with the Lord. And any Jews who don't repent of their sins and follow Christ shall be cast off. Wait. So again, does it matter what family you're born into? Nope. No, it matters how you act. How you act. And now I would prophesy somewhat more concerning the Jews and the Gentiles. For after the book of which I have spoken shall come forth and be written unto the Gentiles and sealed up again unto the Lord, there shall be many which shall believe the words which are written, and they shall carry them forth unto the remnant of our seed. Yeah, so the last chapter was all the people who would reject the book. What was he talking about now? Who's going to believe in the book and then take it to the scattered Jews? The Gentiles. The Gentiles. Which Gentiles? The good ones. What do you mean by good ones? Like the righteous. And how do you know they're righteous? What are they doing? They're going to give the Book of Mormon or Bible to people so they can learn the gospel too. And okay, what's that called? Missionary work. Missionary Correct. Work. So who's Nephi talking about right now? Us. Us. And kind of the extent to which we share the gospel with others. And then shall the remnant of our seed know concerning us how that we came out from Jerusalem and that they are descendants of the Jews. So the people who are descendants of uh, Lehi and Ishmael's families, uh, because of the destruction of the Nephites and this record being hit up, their history was lost. But anybody who's a descendant of these people in the latter days, they'll read this and go, wow, these were our ancestors. And they had the covenants of the Lord. And the gospel of Jesus Christ shall be declared among them. Wherefore, they shall be restored unto the knowledge of their fathers, and also to the knowledge of Jesus Christ, which has had among their fathers. So what's okay. going to be declared among the Jews? The gospel. Uh, Everything of Jesus. The blood makes it. So the Gentiles will get it first, and then they'll just get taken through the whole world. And then shall they rejoice, for they shall know that it is a blessing unto them from the hand of God, and their scales of darkness shall begin to fall from their eyes, and many generations shall not pass away among them, save they shall be pure and delightsome people. What does it mean that the scales of darkness shall begin to fall from their eyes? <gasps> I know, I know. Satan is not going to have any more power over us. It's okay, but a good guess. They, will, they wouldn't follow the gospel, so their eyes would be 
blinded. Kind of spiritually blinded. Yeah, and okay. then they'll read it, and then their eyes will like, be able to see again. Well, see if what? they believe in it. The gospel. The truth of the gospel? Yes. And as people learn the gospel, what does this say they can become? The light some people. There's two things, delight some one. Pure. A pure and delight some people. The so just light. reading the gospel makes us a pure and delight some people? No. no. What? What makes God's people a pure and delight some people? Just reading the scriptures alone? No. The righteousness. Meaning what? Keeping the commandments. What is it? Knew Keep that. Keeping the commandments. Keeping the commandments. So good. living the gospel yes. is what makes them pure mm -hmm. and a delight to the gospel. And it shall come to pass that the Jews which are scattered also shall begin to believe in Christ, and they shall begin to gather in upon the face of the land. And as many as shall believe in Christ shall also become a delightsome people. So what is happening for these converts in the last days? The Jews are going to start believing in Christ. And they're going to be what? Gathered. Converted. To what? Converted and gathered. To, to the house of Israel. And how are the people gathered to the house of Israel? Baptism. Into? The church. The church, Jesus right? Christ. So what is the gathering place for Christ's followers? The church. The church. Okay. And it shall come to pass that the Lord God shall commence his work among all nations. So is it just one nation that's going to get the gospel? No, no, nope. it's the whole world. The whole world. Everyone in All nations, kindreds, tongues, and people to bring about the restoration of his people upon the earth. And are we seeing that happening now? Is the church growing throughout the whole, whole earth? Yep. Yep, this prophecy yep. is coming to pass. And with righteousness shall the Lord God judge the poor and reprove with equi equity. equity for the meek of the earth. And he shall smite the earth with the rod of his mouth and with the breath of his lips shall he slay the wicked. Wait, what does meek mean? It means humble. humble. And, and the poor, Lord. the meek and the poor. Yeah. Poor in spirit, not necessarily. They, they could be poor in possessions or not. But those who are poor and meek, what kind of judgment will they get from God? Okay. A good one. Well, I think, I mean, this could go back to other chapters where it says there that um, they would treat the one other ones badly, who um, weren't dressed as well as them, who didn't have as much as them. So, so it could be referring to those poor and meek. Yeah, Except Jesus. The Lord will reprove with equity. So all those people that the rich people were treating badly, what's going to happen to those rich people in the end? Yeah, is God yeah. going to punish them for treating all these poor people badly? Yes. Yep. So they were treating these people badly, and then the Lord, in His judgment, is going to balance the scales. Wicked are going to get what's get, coming to get, them. Get their justice. Cool. You'll get the consequences. They might not come right away, so they can be like, oh yeah, we got away with, you know, treating these people badly, but judgment day will... There's a record being kept, right, of all those things. Of how you treat others. I always mean that the breath of his lips shall slay the wicked. Because his words are so powerful, the wicked ain't gonna have no more power. But at times be the comment that the Lord God shall cause a great division among the people, and the wicked will he destroy, he will spare his people, yea, even if it so be that he must destroy the wicked by fire. So what is it that divides the people? Fire! No, the Lord. It says what that divides the people? Judgment. But his judgment is based on his what? The commandments. The commandments. And those who follow the commandments, and those, those who don't. don't. And righteousness shall be the girdle of his loins, and faithfulness the girdle of his reins. So is he going to be just and fair with everyone in his judgment? Yep. It will all be according to their works, yep. And then shall the wolf dwell with the lamb. When will the wolf and the lamb dwell in peace and harmony? Second coming. So God's judgment so comes the millennium. in the second coming, and then the millennium. So God's judgment in the second coming is when the wicked are destroyed, and then He goes on to the next thing. What happens the after word? that? In millennium. And then shall the wolf dwell with the lamb, and the leopard shall lie down with the kid. What's a kid? It's a goat. A goat. Why do they need baby goats after kids? Hey. Yeah, you guys were named after baby goats. So we're technically Jesus's goat. <laughs> no, we want to be a sheep. No, Sheep goats. on the right hand, goats on the left hand. 
That is correct. It's a sheep. And the calf and the young lion and the fatling together and a little child shall be born. Or in this verse, will there be peace on the earth for anyone? Yes, yes. And the cow and the bear shall feed. The young ones shall lie down together. The lion shall eat straw like the ox. So is, is, is the lion going to go, you know, attack a gazelle? Are we going to go attack a cow cow burger for going to be vegetarians? That's what it sounds like. What if baking well, I'm sure we'll be eating a lot of Like we've talked about, guys, it's real easy to think about what we're losing with this change. But really, but we're, we're gaining it. infinite life. But I'm pretty yeah. sure that when Jesus You're gonna Christ be resurrected comes to the earth, it'll be so meaningless because of how amazing and incredible all the other stuff we're gonna have is going to be. Can you Mommy? still feel physical pain? But I like if it's yet. something that. I no, I think it's just the millennium. I think it's just I think resurrected beings only feel emotional pain. They don't feel physical pain. And the sucking child shall play on the hole of the ass. And the weaned child shall put his hand on the cockatrice and death. I feel like we've read like the child shall put his hand on the cockatrice and death. Yeah, Isaiah mentioned it a few times and Nephi is now explaining the words of Isaiah. They shall not hurt nor destroy in all my holy mountain. For the earth shall be full of the knowledge of the Lord as the waters cover the sea. Why is it going to be, no one's going to hurt each other? Why is it going to be so peaceful? Everybody will have the knowledge of the Lord. Imagine everyone on the earth faithfully following the gospel. Nobody like, you know, hurting each other, stealing from each other, taking advantage of each other. Just humbly following the Savior. How peaceful the world would be. But there's a lot of people who don't want to do that. So when the Lord removes those people from the earth, and you just let the people faithfully follow him, and we probably won't be sneezing anymore because we have resurrected bodies. So we won't be getting sick? So, no. So this verse tells us what is it that brings peace and harmony to the earth? The knowledge of the Lord. The knowledge of the Lord, very good. And the extent to which we apply and live that knowledge of the Lord. Wherefore the things of all nations shall be made known. Yea, all things shall be made known unto the children of men. So all of the scriptures that are sealed, all the things that God has said, you don't get to learn yet. When is you all? To wait. Of, yeah, you gotta wait. Wait till when? What are we gonna learn? The all millennium. These the millennium. So it shows. I mean, if we're learning more during the millennium, then technically we're still growing spiritually even after the resurrection. During the millennium, we're still gonna be doing work. Yeah, we're going to do missionary, so missionary work, work temple work, work, so then you're probably still going to be reading your scriptures. But it makes me wonder, why does God do it that way? Why doesn't he just snap his fingers and make us know it? Like, what, why make us... We'll do better work if we already know it. Would we, though? We're trying to become something, right? I don't learn and grow so I can just get a nice house. I learn and grow so I can perform a work. Right? Heaven isn't a place where I just get to sit back in my beautiful mansion while, you know, servants bring me things all the time. That's not heaven. Heaven is a place where we do the work that God does. We're becoming like Him. So when I learn something now or in the millennium or whenever, I'm not learning it so I can, you know, enter a, into a building. I'm learning it so I can perform the work that God does, so I can be like Him and do and engage in this glorious divine work that he does. There is nothing which is secret, save it shall be revealed. There is no work of darkness, save it shall be made manifest in the light. And there is nothing which is sealed upon the earth, save it, it shall be loosed. Because this little book is sealed, that will be loosed. Exactly. And who's going to show all of those works of darkness and reveal all that. The Lord. The Lord. You're going to come and say, yeah, you guys can't hide it. I know all your works and this is your judgment. He's going to reveal all the works of Satan and also all the works of God. All the scriptures, all the revelation. So all that is bad will be made known and all that is good, that is good will be made known. It's like it's, it's going to be like available. available for you to learn it. Right. But it's probably going to take a while for us to learn all that stuff. Wherefore, all things which have been revealed unto the children of men shall at that day be revealed, and Satan shall power over the hearts of the children of men no more for a long time. And now, my beloved brethren, I make an end of my savings. 
Sage. Uh, maybe we need to work on his fiscal responsibility. <laughs> making an end of his savings. <laughs> and Satan shall have power over the hearts of the children of men no more. For a long time, not forever. For a long time. And why does that stand out to you? What does that mean? And he'll so get power again. He will. And it said, there's many scriptures that say after the millennium, Satan will be loosed again. And there's a reason. Who is it that gives Satan power? Us. Who specifically? The wicked. The wicked. And what happens at the end of the millennium? What? The wicked come. The back. wicked come back and they get resurrected. So who has power on the earth again now? Satan. He's like, my people are back. Why do we need to come back? Uh, why can't they just be my res guess? Why can't they just be resurrected and go your way? It's like the last. <laughs> we're fine here. We're fine. Of um, Endgame, where all the heroes sure. of all the stories Can I watch it again? get that? summoned. They all get brought back. So you have all oh of the gosh, righteous in one giant army against all of the was evil the sinister. <laughs> it will be an epic battle, but it won't be a battle of... It won't be an Avengers style battle. Dang it! It won't be a battle Lord of weapons of your... because we have resurrected bodies and we can't what? Okay. We can't hurt each other, right? So what kind of conflict or battle is it going to be? It's a battle <laughs> of philosophy. I've not... It's, you guys, it'll be the same battle we fought in the what? Pre-mortal act. Pre-mortal act. And we have bodies. Can we hurt each other no. physically then? So what kind of war did we have? It was a war of what? It was a war of ideas between God's plan or Satan's, Satan's plan. In this epic battle Wait. before final judgment, it'll be that exact thing again. It's going to be the wicked are probably going to be trying to convince people here in the millennium to follow them. Yeah. Now all the wicked are back. They're like, hey guys, now get get away from this Jesus person. Really? Oh because I've been resurrected for a thousand years while y'all have been... It's awesome. And you, okay. You've already been here like five. <laughs> well, you just got here like five <laughs> seconds ago. And, and you got here five seconds ago because of him, right? Because and of him. Still and your people. leader has been bound right. for a thousand years. I'm just that picturing could. the scene of where resurrected Nephi is face to face with resurrected Laban and Laban. But it, it, what's striking to me is, it says, Christ will cast out Satan. Christ will bound Satan for a thousand years and then Satan will be loosed again. It creates this image of like Christ coming and putting handcuffs on Satan, putting him in a prison, but it's actually not that. Christ takes the wicked people from the earth and, and that's, that's why what Satan is, is bound. bound. Because he can't because do anything. He doesn't have anyone to... Uh, and Christ him. loosening Satan isn't doing anything to Satan. It's him bringing back, back the wicked people. people. And the reason he will bring back the wicked people is because everyone is promised the resurrection. Who's, who was born on the earth? Who was born on the yeah. earth. And A battle of ideas. It'll be the gospel of Jesus Christ. It's the same battle we're waging today. It goes on forever. Like what started in the beginning, what's going on now. What's going to go on then. Yeah. So if we don't live the gospel, we don't learn how to live that lifestyle, so we can't be in that place where people are living that lifestyle. We just won't fit there. We can't do what they're doing. So to be with God and Jesus Christ, we have to know how to do what they do, and they're training us how to do those things through the gospel. Um, but people who don't get that training, they can't be there because they won't know what to do, right? And they don't want to learn. God wants them to learn, Jesus wants them to learn, but guess what? They don't want. They don't want it. The Lord's like, okay, you're going to have to go there. Just like he said to Lucifer, his son, and all those who followed him, you guys, if you come here, you'll get all these blessings. They said, we don't want it. Right? So God isn't saying, you can't be here. It's those people saying, we don't want to be there. You. They can say, no, 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 Heavenly Father, let us live in your kingdom. We just don't want to do all that stuff. That would go against the laws of justice and they're not wouldn't be prepared he's like i'd love to have you live here but if you live here you have to do all these things do you want to do these things no so you have to know what to do in order to do the you have to study and you have to prepare yourself and you have to work hard in order to do the work of the, the work Lord. 
click the subscribe button, leave a like, ring that bell, and, and keep studying the scriptures.